It's time for our first important proof with subsequences. This is a very nice result. We're going to prove that a sequence AN converges to A if and only if every subsequence of AN also converges to A. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing subsequences. Of course, we need to prove that if a sequence AN converges to A, then every subsequence of AN also converges to A. That's what we'll do first. And then we need to prove that if every subsequence of AN converges to A, then AN converges to A. That takes about one sentence to prove, so we'll finish that up at the end. So first we'll assume that the sequence AN converges to A, and we'll take an arbitrary subsequence A. A -N -K. As usual, to prove that a sequence converges to some limit, we're going to begin with an epsilon that's greater than zero. And we want to prove that eventually, after a certain point, every term of a n k is within epsilon of the desired limit a. We already have some pretty useful information because every term of a n k, by definition, is a term of a n, and we already know that a n converges to a. Thus, we know it's the case that there's some natural number, say big N, so that every term of a n after the big nth term is within epsilon of its limit a. And of course, we want to prove a similar thing about a n k, that there exists some natural number, say big N1, so that every term of a n k after the big N one term is within epsilon of the limit A. The idea behind how we do this is pretty straightforward. And I think this diagram of our sequence a n may help illustrate the concept. This is just a number line with the terms of our sequence a n drawn on it. The terms kind of look equally spaced apart, but they might not be. Of course, this is just an arbitrary sequence. Here is the big nth term, a big n, and remember, we know that every term after that is within epsilon of the limit a. So as long as we take terms of a and k that are sufficiently far along in the original sequence, so they fall somewhere in here, then we'll be guaranteed this inequality. So then what value of big N1 would work so that the following terms in our subsequence are sufficiently far enough along in the original sequence? What you have to remember is that NK is itself a sequence. It's a sequence that picks out which terms from the original sequence will be part of our subsequence. For example, when n1 equals 1, n2 equals 3, and n3 equals 6, this means the first term of our subsequence is the first term of the original sequence. The second term of our subsequence is the third term of the original sequence. The third term of our subsequence is the sixth term of the original sequence, and so on. So that is the meaning of these n k values. Then, since the smallest that n1 can be is 1, and each, say, n k has to be at least 1 greater than the previous value, so n k is greater than or equal to n k minus 1, plus one, this is because the terms of the subsequence need to be moving forward in the original sequence. We can't repeat terms and we can't go backwards. Because of these facts, we have the very important property that n k is greater than or equal to k. The significance of this can kind of get lost in the notation. What it means, for example, is that the fourth term of our subsequence is at least four terms along in the original sequence. And in general, the kth term of our subsequence is at least k terms along in the original sequence. This is a very important property of subsequences to understand. Now, making use of it, we know that if we let big N1 equal our original big N, 
Then if k is greater than big N1, of course, that means that k is greater than big N, and thus NK is greater than N. And again, that's because NK is greater than or equal to K. If we go K terms along in our subsequence, we have to be at least K terms along in the original sequence, and K is greater than big N. So we have that if K is greater than big N1, NK is greater than N. So this is what we wanted to prove, and now we've just about got it. We found our big N1 value. Let's finish cleaning this up. So we let big N1 equal big N. Then we know that if K is greater than big N1, that of course means that K is greater than big N, and so NK is greater than big N, which means that ANK will exist in this part of the original sequence. So we know that for all K, greater than big N1, the absolute value of a n k minus a is less than epsilon. Again, that's because we know if we go more than big N1 terms into our subsequence, that is more than big N terms into our original sequence. So we're able to apply this same inequality. It holds true for all of those terms. So when K is greater than big N1, all of these a and k values are in here. They are terms of our sequence, the original sequence, after the big nth term. And so we know such terms of the sequence are within epsilon of the limit a. Again, the idea is very simple. We know that we can go far along enough in the original sequence so that this inequality is true. So we say, just go at least that far along in the subsequence and we are guaranteed to have the same inequality. And so, by definition, our arbitrary subsequence ANK converges to A. And so we've proven that if a sequence AN converges to A, then every subsequence of AN also converges to A. Then to finish up, we need to prove that if every subsequence of AN converges to A, then AN converges to A. And here is how we do that. We assume that every subsequence of AN converges to A, but AN is a subsequence of itself. Thus, this statement includes the sequence AN. So AN also converges to A. To be a little more explicit about how every sequence is a subsequence of itself, notice that the sequence AN is just the subsequence ANK, where the kth term of NK is equal to K. This would mean that N1 is one, so take the first term of the sequence, N2 is two, so take the second term of the sequence, N3 is three, and so on. This subsequence just takes every term from the original sequence, it is the original sequence. So when we assume that every subsequence of AN converges to A, that includes AN itself, which must thus converge to A. So a sequence converges to a limit if and only if all of its subsequences converge to that same limit. This gives us a really slick way to prove that a sequence diverges, and we'll learn more about that in future lessons. Mm -hmm.